Welcome to another crash course. Today we're going to be talking about how you can implement user authentication in your web applications using Node.js, Express.js, and Passport.js. Now the way that I've set this up is in a series of videos and we're first going to kind of jump into what are your authentication options in general. I know that's a question that I had for a long time you know, what do we have? I hear stuff about JWT, um, username and password, and then you've got all this other stuff like OAuth and even some custom um, strategies that you can use to authenticate your users. So we'll go through that. Then we'll talk a little bit about the Passport.js framework, what it is, what kind of structure does it use to authenticate users into the apps, and then what are some of the different strategies that you can use within it. And then finally, we'll actually go into the implementation of the Passport Local strategy and the Passport JWT strategy. Although we'll talk about which strategies we might use in different situations, both of these strategies are going to be really good for anyone who is just trying to get their app off the ground and their primary focus is not necessarily on authentication, but they actually need authentication um, to get it off the ground. So these are kind of like the, the bare bones, um, most basic way to authenticate users into an application, and it's gonna be great for you know individuals, small teams, startups, anyone that is building their application from scratch. There are a few prerequisites for this tutorial series. I've pretty much assumed that you already know the basics of coding um, within the Node.js ecosystem. So that means you know you have a pretty good understanding of Node.js modules and uh, package.json's, all of that kind of stuff, as well as things like the Express framework. Um, also things like asynchronous programming, so promises and callbacks. Um, hopefully you're at least a little bit familiar with all of the topics here on the screen. Um, if not, you can still get through the tutorial, but I would highly suggest um, kind of brushing up on anything that you're not, um, you don't have a very basic understanding of. This being the first video of the entire series, I want to walk through what you're gonna see, we've already kind of touched on it, but you can peruse the slide that's up on the screen right now for a few moments, just to see what kind of topics we're gonna to be covering. Now, the way that I've laid this out um, is it's going to be in a YouTube playlist, so you'll see all of the videos in sequential order, but the videos that are considered to be the core lessons of this tutorial series will have something like a one out of five or one out of ten or um, part four out of ten whatever it may be and then the non-core lessons kind of what I could call filler lessons um, for knowledge gaps are going to be included in the order that you probably should watch them but you don't necessarily need to watch them if you already have a pretty good grasp on those topics so I'll try to during the video mention hey, you should probably go check out this video if you're shaky on this concept, and then you can pause the video, go watch the one that you need to, and then come back. The first thing that I wanna cover is what are your authentication options here? Before we get into any coding, it's pretty important to take a look at what's available to us and deciding what is my use case and what's going to be best for that use case. So on the screen, I've laid out all of the authentication options that you might find um, if you are in the Node.js ecosystem or any other ecosystem for that matter. And they are listed from least complex to most complex, um, but that does not mean that the least complex option is the worst option. It just means that as you kind of move up that chain, it's gonna require a little bit more um, understanding uh, more pieces that you have to understand to implement the strategy itself. In the scope of this tutorial series, we're just going to be sticking with the left two, so the session-based authentication, um, aka the passport local strategy. 
and the JSON Web Token or JWT authentication, uh, or AKA the Passport JWT strategy. Now you also have a little bit more complex authentication um, that you'll see, especially if you're trying to use um, a large API, like maybe the YouTube API or any Google API, um, even GitHub's API. These big companies rely on OAuth, it's just a protocol, to give different um, access rights to users trying to access resources within their API. So you'll kind of get the gist of what that is as we get into the JWT authentication, but I'm gonna stay away from completely diving into the OAuth. Although we're not gonna actually get into the, the coding implementation of solutions like OAuth or even custom solutions, it's definitely important to at least touch on it. So what OAuth is all about, it's, it's just a protocol, and I know that can get pretty confusing when you have um, software as a service providers such as Auth0 and Okta, among others, that actually provide this OAuth protocol as a service. So you, it's really confusing if you look at those companies, you know, namely one that's named Auth0, which sounds like a protocol. It gets really jumbled in your head, like what's the protocol, what's the company, you know, how is all of this working? So really what OAuth, what the OAuth protocol aims to do is separate out the two components of um, we'll call user authentication. I gotta be careful with the terminology here because um, there's a big difference between authorization and authentication. So on the left with the JWTs and the local logins, the session-based um, authentication, that is all about knowing who the user is and that is what we would call authentication. Now on the other side of things, if you have seen things like social logins, like sign in with Google or sign in with Facebook, that's a little bit more about authorization. So that's kind of, it's not as much who, who we're talking about, but instead who has access to what resources. So in other words, you'll get into things like scopes, you know, what does this particular um, subject or user have um, authorization to access? Does it have authorization to make just GET request against the API or does it also have authorization to edit certain resources within the API? So as you might guess using the OAuth protocol and you'll also hear things like OpenID Connect um, is closely related that is going to be used with these bigger services where you know maybe one company such as Google, allows users that have varying um, authorizations to access the API in the same way. So if I or, or you wanted to access resources from say um, Google's YouTube data API, so if we wanted to get YouTube analytics or something like that, we don't have authorization to do certain things within that API and that is defined by the scopes that we um, are basically provided in our access token that's related to the OAuth protocol. Now, I know all of that sounds very complex and it's definitely not something that you can even begin to understand completely in just a few minutes, but I did wanna talk about that um, and kind of just mention what it is and why we're not gonna get into all the details of it. I think we have plenty on our plate um, with the session-based authentication and the JWT-based authentication um, to even start talking about that. So those are your options. We're gonna stick with the two on the left, the least complex ones, and probably the most common implementations that you'll see for startups and people who are just trying to get their application off the ground and worry about the complex authentication of it a little bit later down the road when they have either more resources, more money, or both that can actually spend the time to implement something a little bit more complex like the OAuth protocol.
To wrap up this introductory video, I wanted to give a brief overview of what the Passport.js framework is. And the reason being is we're actually going to be implementing two different strategies within the Passport framework, but that just basically means that we have two different middlewares that are connecting into the bigger Passport.js middleware. So you might ask, what is a middleware? Um, for those that are not familiar what middlewares are in Express or are just a little bit fuzzy on how they work, I have created a video that will be included in this playlist so that you can brush up on that and get yourself up to speed. But basically all that Passport.js is, is a middleware that integrates within your Express.js application and handles all of the authentication logic using the specific strategy that you choose um, to plug into the Passport.js framework. Now, the strategies that are included, if we go to Passport.js, we can go to the home page and see that there are plenty of different strategies here. So um, we can do anything from the Passport Local and Passport JWT, like we're doing. And we can also do something a lot more complex. You can see that we have stuff like the Passport OAuth 2, which is what we just talked about. Um, or even, you know, something more specific, Passport Instagram. We can use the Instagram login to authenticate our, and um, delegate access to our users. So there's a lot of different strategies, and all of these strategies have been created by independent developers that basically say, okay, here's the Passport.js framework. It's just a middleware, and it allows me to kind of use that framework as a starting point and then we can just build in the the um, specific pieces of authentication in our own middleware which we call a strategy so in summary passport js is just a framework that is a middleware that also allows individual developers to develop other middlewares called strategies that connect in with this bigger middleware that we call the passport js framework and then all of that gets wrapped up into a bundle and put into your Express app, and it works seamlessly with your Express routes. We'll see in a lot more detail how each of these strategies, the local and JWT strategy, work as we go through the series, but it is important to just understand the basics of what this is. If I had to sum up the code logic of Passport.js in a few sentences, it would basically be this. So Passport.js is a middleware, as we just talked about, and on every HTTP request that a user calls to our Express server, the Passport framework is going to first pick up, okay, what strategy are we using here? And then it will use that strategy to say, hey, is that user that just requested that resource authenticated? If that user is authenticated, then Passport is going to let that user access the resource. It's going to you know, go into the express route. If that user is not authenticated based on the strategy we're using, then Passport's going to return a 401 um, HTTP status, which is basically the unauthorized status. So that's kind of Passport.js in a nutshell. Again, it's gonna get a lot easier as we see the actual code flow of what's going on with this middleware. And with that, I think we are done with the introduction to this series. If you are wanting to implement the Passport local strategy, then it should be just the next couple videos in the series. I think I'll throw in some of those optional topics in there. But if you want to just skip to the Passport JWT implementation, then you can just skip over all of the next videos and go down to the first video in that series. If you choose to do that, I will mention that a lot of the elementary explanations regarding the Passport JS framework is done in this first, the Passport local strategy, all of those videos. So it would be advantageous even if you're trying to just do the Passport JWT strategy to watch the Passport local strategy explainer 
because it's just going to give you a much greater understanding of what you're doing. So it's up to you. Go to whatever video is appropriate for your needs. Be sure to give a like and a comment and maybe even subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the series.